Okay, folks, welcome back to Pilot Stack. Uh, and take a look and see how well does four flights glide advisor work. Uh, up to 4,000 feet, line up Northern California, over San Pablo Bay, a little bit north of San Francisco. Uh, today's going to be an extra challenge here for us, but a pretty strong winds aloft. Uh, forecast winds are out of the north at about 30 knots right now. So I'm going to do a quick um, airspeed, ground speed calibration check for you so you kind of see uh, how well Glide Advisor does with a strong headwind to make it a worst case situation. So here I am flying as close as I can about 95 knots. I uh, take a look at the uh, four flight readout. I'm showing about 100 knots. I'm showing a, just a slight tailwind right now. So maybe about five to seven knots of tailwind. So I'm going to turn off towards the south. Keep my airspeed the same. And as I turn off towards the south, or maybe just a little bit south-southwest, we should see that ground speed start to pick up. Because I got tailwind. Okay, so here's my south-southwest heading. They're still pretty close to 95 knots. Airspeed 100, or ground speed, 126 knots really picked up. Okay, let's turn it back up into what I think into the wind would be, which is a little bit to the east of north. I'm doing this uh, demonstration in uh, the fall in uh, Northern California. It's a pretty common event. We have uh, all offshore winds are blowing. You can look by the outside camera, extremely good visibilities here, very, very, very dry air. Uh, forecast for this altitude was single digits of humidity. Um, so this is why a lot of times California burns up in October, November, because these very strong Santa Ana or Southern California, we call Santa Ana, Northern California, called uh, El Diablo, as in the devil, devil winds. Okay, now I'm pointing a little bit to the, back to the north. Get that airspeed stabilized. Get four flight stabilized on its ground speed. Here I'm down to 87 knots and 15 knots of headwind. Okay, now let's see how well Glide Advisor works. What it shows Traffic. on this particular Turn heading, the limit mile. of my glide, 1, feet you can uh, look off on the, okay. Traffic is on site. Thank you for flying. Okay, one of the uh, challenges of taking this maneuver down somewhat low is I do want to abide by my minimum altitude to fly rules. So as I roll out on this turn, I can expand the view a little bit. And it looks like Four Flight's Glide Advisor says it's going to get us just, if you uh, see that Skaggs Island box, just a little bit, uh, just about midway through that box, which is uh, just short of a uh, river out there in front of us. It's actually between two rivers. Traffic. Got those two rivers Six visual o'clock. in sight. One mile. One and here's the power back idle. Below. Guys, just maneuvering around underneath us. Okay, best glide speed for this airplane is 73 knots at a max gross weight. The late bring my car beat down. Don't really need it today. It's pretty dry out. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty light today, so I'm going to take my airspeed down to 70 knots from a best glide. And I've got a visual point out there in front of me, which if you look on the four flight. It's the uh, max distance is right about the S of that VOR box in front of us of Skaggs Island. Holding right at the S, which is just about midpoint between two rivers, one down about 11 o'clock low and one about 1230. So still holding that. Here's my 70 knots. I'm stable. Traffic's minus 500 feet behind me, so I'm not too concerned. I was, uh, so airspeed 70 knots, ground speed 62 knots, so I've got uh, maybe 10 knots of headwind right now, taking in effect true airspeed. 
Got a visual point out the window. We've looked uh, at a previous, well, actually, we'll look at a future video. Hot stack video of how to determine glide distance by just visually looking out the window. Notice the glide advisor. Still holding it right at the S of Skaggs Island. Okay, every uh, thousand feet or so, I'm just going to run some power up. Try to clear that engine. Make sure this is a simulated glide, not a true glide. Hold my airspeed. Visual point that I'm aiming for is uh, pretty much holding. Gonna expand the view a little bit on our glide advisor. Still holding right at the S and the C of Skaggs on the VOR box. It hasn't budged. Ground speed is down to 64 knots. Seven, eight knots of headwind right now. Air speed is constant, vertical speed is constant. My traffic fellow's gone long gone. Notice glide advisor is still exactly holding right on the S of Skaggs Island. With these strong offshore flows, typically right around here, around the 2,000 foot level, is where the winds are usually start to build. Earlier this morning, some of the mountain peaks are up to almost 40 to 50 knots, coming out of the north and northeast. Okay, coming through 2,000 feet, still on airspeed 70 knots, ground speed 67 knots, so looks like the wind is dying down. Light advisors now show me just slightly short of the S and the C of Skaggs on in the VOR box. I clear the engine one more time. Restabilize my, restabilize my glide speed. Good speed, good rate. Air speed or ground speed down to 69 knots, so almost starting to show no wind effect right now. Glide advisor is right on the bottom edge of the S. Expand the view slightly. Visual point out there in front of me is just about holding. So, major emphasis, would I be trying to glide to this field out there in front? Absolutely not. This is a demonstration of maximum glide distance. There's about 14 fields I could have picked were much closer than this. Plus, I'm uh, coming up over the water. If I did blow it and land it short, uh, we'd be getting the water wings out. So, so holding 70 knots, 1,000 foot to go. Visual point out there is just about a constant. Flight advisor is slightly short of the S of Skaggs Island. One more clearing, or clearing of the engine. Good. As I did clear that engine, the flight advisor did kind of pop up into the S a little bit, which because it saw that ground speed increase. That should back off again here. Right on the bottom of the S. Visual point out there in front of me has been a constant. Going through 500 feet. Thank you. Our flight confirms we came through 500 feet. And still right at the bottom of the S. I aim it towards a big pile of dirt down there. And I think that's just about low enough to take it to. But we just, just about got to the point that I wanted to get to. And we'll break this off at 100 feet. And notice we're right at the S of Skaggs Island. So, how was that? <laughs> Boy, I'm an uh, old school guy, learned how to do all this stuff visually years ago. 
This technology is so fantastic that uh, Poor Flight could come up with uh, the ability to do that. Just what a safety enhancement. Not to try to sell an iPad to you or subscribe to Poor Flight, but just this one feature alone is worth its price. Uh, for the guys that fly IFR for sure in the clouds, even for the VFR pod, who just has a hard time judging distance. Within the green circle, you're probably going to make it. Outside the green circle, don't even bother trying. So, thanks for watching. Uh, one more item to add to your pilot stack of knowledge of how the old Glide Advisor works with Four Flight. So, please uh, hit that like button, and we could use all the subscribers we could get. And uh, beautiful weekend day for me flying, so we'll see you all next time.